Did you know that the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was recorded in Antarctica? But what if I told you that beneath this hostile, frigid expanse there might be traces of ancient civilizations? Sounds outlandish, doesn't it? But stick with me because this icy mystery is a rabbit hole that goes deep into our past. Today we're going to delve into a world that is often overlooked in our discourse about ancient civilizations, the frozen continent of Antarctica. Now, Antarctica might be the last place you would think of when it comes to ancient civilizations. After all, it's the coldest, windiest, and driest continent, a harsh landscape covered in ice up to a mile thick. It's seemingly inhospitable, an icy wilderness that is the definition of desolation. And yet, what if I told you that this freezing wasteland may have once been a bustling hub of ancient activity? Through the ages, Antarctica has been subject to a variety of hypotheses and theories. It has always been a source of mystery, partly due to its inaccessibility and the harsh conditions that make exploration a formidable challenge. Some theories suggest that this continent, now hidden beneath miles of ice, was once home to ancient civilizations that we can hardly imagine. These theories often hinge on controversial interpretations of satellite imagery, ancient maps, and unique structures spotted under the ice, suggesting human, or perhaps even non-human activity. One of the most famous pieces of evidence is the Piri Race Map, a pre-modern world map compiled in 1513 by the Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Race. Part of this map shows the northern part of Antarctica, ice-free, which has led to speculations about ancient maritime civilizations with advanced geographical knowledge. Critics, however, argue that the map is a compilation of multiple sources, some of which may have been flawed. Satellite imagery of Antarctica has also led to intrigue and speculation. In 2006, Google Earth users spotted a formation in Antarctica that looked uncannily like a face leading to suggestions of a lost civilization. Scientists, however, think that this is a natural phenomenon known as pareidolia, where the mind perceives a familiar pattern where none actually exists. The most provocative theories suggest that ancient alien civilizations could have once made their home on the icy continent, pointing towards supposed pyramid-like structures visible beneath the ice. Though these claims are yet to find any substantial scientific backing, so what is the truth? Is it possible that an ancient civilization could have once existed in this inhospitable landscape? Or are these theories the products of overactive imaginations and misinterpreted data? It's time for us to embark on a journey of exploration and discovery into the icy depths of Antarctica. We're all familiar with the mysteries of the ancient world, but Antarctica's mysteries are, well, colder and much more unusual, there are theories that take our understanding of ancient civilizations and flip it on its head, painting a picture of a past that is both startling and thought-provoking. Let's delve into some of these unconventional theories, each with its unique blend of mystery, speculation, and a dash of audaciousness. The first, and perhaps the most known, is the hypothesis that Antarctica is the lost continent of Atlantis. Proponents of this theory suggest that around 12,000 years ago, the entire continent was shifted from a temperate zone to the South Pole due to Earth's crust displacement. A controversial idea put forward by Charles Habgood in the 1950s. This cataclysmic event, they suggest, throws the sophisticated Atlantean civilization in a matter of days, preserving it beneath the ice. But what about those pyramid-like structures I mentioned earlier? Some theorize that these are remnants of this ancient civilization. These structures, visible via satellite, bear an uncanny resemblance to the pyramids of Egypt and Central America. However, most scientists argue that these pyramid-like formations are likely the result of natural erosion and wind patterns unique to Antarctica. And then there's the theory of an ancient extraterrestrial outpost in Antarctica. It's been suggested that some of the unusual formations and anomalies found on the continent may be the remains of alien technology or structures. Proponents of this idea often cite supposed UFO sightings and unexplained phenomena in the region. But again, these claims have not found widespread acceptance in the scientific community. 
And let's not forget the speculation surrounding ancient maps, like the Piri Reis and Orontius Phineas maps, which seem to depict the Antarctic coastline free of ice, suggesting that the cartographers had knowledge of the continent long before it was officially discovered. Skeptics, however, argue that these maps are based on guesswork and mistaken interpretations of other landmasses. The Piri Reis map has long been a subject of fascination among historians, cartographers, and conspiracy theorists alike. Drawn in 1513 by Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Reis, this map illustrates parts of Europe, Africa, and the Americas with surprising accuracy for the time. But the intrigue doesn't stop there. The southernmost portion of the map seems to depict the northern coastline of Antarctica, a landmass not officially discovered until 1820. But how is that possible? Some proponents of unconventional theories suggest that the map is evidence of an advanced ancient civilization that had detailed geographical knowledge long before modern science. They argue that the Piri Race map, along with other similar cartographic anomalies, proves that ancient mariners must have charted the Antarctic coast when it was free of ice. A situation that hasn't existed for over 34,000 years according to current scientific understanding. The details of the Piri Race map are remarkable. It is said to include mountain ranges that were not discovered until the advent of modern seismic surveys, and even features a detailed depiction of the Andean Range in South America, which is surprisingly accurate for a 16th century map. However, skeptics caution against reading too much into these observations. They argue that the map's supposed depiction of Antarctica could be based on a misunderstanding of the South American coastline. As for the extraordinary detail, they suggest that this could be the result of synthesis from a variety of sources, some of which may have contained errors or embellishments. Despite the debate, one fact remains. The Piri Race map is an extraordinary piece of historical cartography. It offers a glimpse into the knowledge and skill of early 16th century navigators and the seafaring cultures that produced them. And although the debate around the Piri Race map and its implications for our understanding of ancient civilizations will likely continue. It undeniably continues to add a layer of mystery to that is Antarctica. As we continue to dig deeper into our past, we are left pondering what else is waiting to be discovered. As you might expect, the scientific community's perspective on the possibility of ancient civilizations in Antarctica is rooted in a careful analysis of available evidence and our current understanding of geology, climate history, and human development. Firstly, Antarctica is, and has been for millions of years, the coldest, driest, and windiest continent, with temperatures that can drop below minus 80 degrees Celsius. Surviving in such conditions would be a monumental challenge for any civilization, ancient or modern. Thus, the idea of a long-lost society thriving in this frozen landscape seems unlikely, in terms of geology and climate history, our current understanding tells us that Antarctica has been covered in ice for about 34 million years. This was confirmed by ice cores drilled deep into the Antarctic ice sheet, which provide a record of past climates. This leads us to question, if Antarctica has been an icy wasteland for millions of years, how could an ancient civilization have existed there? Furthermore, the timeline of human evolution and migration also complicates the idea of an ancient Antarctic civilization. Modern humans are believed to have emerged around 300,000 years ago, and our ancestors began to migrate out of Africa about 70,000 years ago. But even if they could have reached Antarctica, the extreme conditions would have made survival virtually impossible. That said, the scientific community is not dismissive of all unconventional ideas. The Piri Race map, for instance, does raise interesting questions about the knowledge of ancient seafarers. However, rather than attributing this to a lost civilization, most scientists would likely view it as a testament to the skill and knowledge of the historical societies that we already know about. Let's delve into the realm of the deepest human-made hole and consider the climatic history of Antarctica. The title for the deepest humans have drilled into the earth goes to the Kola Super Deep Borehole, located in Russia. This ambitious drilling project reached a staggering depth of about 7.5 miles or 12 kilometers before it was stopped in the early 1990s. Even this depth, 
however, is still less than 0.2% of the Earth's total radius. As for Antarctica, deep ice cores have been drilled, but these extend only a few kilometers down, providing a record of hundreds of thousands of years of Earth's climate history. This brings us to the climatic past of Antarctica. According to geologists, Antarctica has not always been the frozen land we know today. The continent was once part of the supercontinent Gondwana, which existed in the southern hemisphere millions of years ago. Fossil records indicate that Gondwana was home to a variety of plant and animal life, suggesting a much warmer climate. Around 180 million years ago, Gondwana started to break apart. Antarctica slowly moved to its present location over the South Pole, and by about 34 million years ago, the continent was rapidly cooling. This cooling trend culminated in the formation of a permanent ice sheet. However, while there were fluctuations in the extent of the ice cover due to global climate cycles, has been largely icy for millions of years. There are indeed hypotheses suggesting that parts of Antarctica could have been ice-free and warmer during certain periods due to factors like geothermal heat and changes in Earth's orbit. However, these periods likely occurred millions of years ago, well before humans existed. Thus, while Antarctica may have once been a warmer, hospitable place, this would have been in a geological era far removed from the advent of human civilization. Despite this, the question of Antarctica's past and its secrets continue to captivate scientists and explorers, keeping the icy continent firmly in the realm of intriguing exploration. Have you ever wondered what secrets are buried beneath the sands of time? Picture this, ancient Egypt, a civilization that left behind architectural wonders like the Sphinx and the pyramids. But what if everything we've been taught about these iconic structures is just a fraction of their true story? Consider the possibility that the pyramids and the Sphinx could be older than the Egyptians themselves, that the Sphinx might once have been Anubis, the jackal-headed god, and that the pyramids might contain mathematical marvels and alignments with celestial bodies. Intricacies that could suggest a technology or knowledge way beyond the human capability of that era, perhaps pointing towards alien gods. Let's look at the Great Sphinx, a symbol of ancient Egypt that continues to perplex scholars today. The Sphinx is like a silent sentinel sitting on the Giza Plateau, its weathered face gazing eastward towards the rising sun. But if you examine the Sphinx closely, there are clues in its geology that suggest its story may be more complex than we initially thought. One geologist, Dr. Robert Schock, first brought attention to this in the 90s when he proposed a controversial theory about the Sphinx's age. He noticed that the erosion patterns on the Sphinx appeared to have been caused by water, not just a bit of rain, but thousands of years of heavy rainfall the kind that hasn't occurred in the Giza region for about 10,000 years since the end of the last ice age. Now, traditional Egyptology places the construction of the Sphinx in the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, around 2500 BCE, when the area was already an arid desert. So where did this water come from? Shock proposed that the Sphinx may be far older than traditionally believed, dating back to a time when Egypt was a lush tropical landscape, with heavy monsoons and flash floods. Of course, the implications of this are profound, shaking the bedrock of our historical understanding. If the Sphinx was weathered by water, and this weathering occurred before Egypt became a desert, it would mean that the monument was already ancient by the time the first pharaoh took the throne. It also begs the question, who built it? The civilization capable of such monumental architecture would predate any we know of, could there be an unknown advanced civilization lost to the sands of time waiting to be discovered? Isn't that what makes history so exciting? The fact that we don't have all the answers. Yet, let's now delve into an even more controversial theory surrounding the Sphinx. Now we've all been brought up knowing it as the Sphinx. But what if it wasn't always a lion-bodied, human-headed creature that we see today? What if it was something different? This theory brings us to Robert Temple a British author and researcher. He proposed a highly debated theory that the Great Sphinx was originally not a Sphinx at all, but was instead a massive statue of the jackal god Anubis. Yes, you heard it right. Anubis, the god of embalming and the dead, known for guiding souls in the afterlife. But why Anubis? 
Temple noted that the current human head of the Sphinx is proportionally much smaller than its body, which could indicate that the head was recarved from a larger original. In this case, a jackal head would fit the larger body better, in proportion. Besides, Anubis is typically portrayed as a recumbent canine or a muscular man with a jackal's head. Not so far from the Sphinx's current layout. Moreover, there's the location of the Sphinx to consider. It sits in front of the Khafre's pyramid, as if it's guarding the entrance to the afterlife, a job usually assigned to Anubis in ancient Egyptian mythology. Could it be that the Sphinx, which literally means living image, was the living image of Anubis instead of the human-headed lion we see today? As you might imagine, this hypothesis has been met with skepticism from mainstream Egyptologists. There are many factors to consider, including the established symbolism of lion-bodied creatures in the ancient world and the absence of any ancient texts referring to the Sphinx as Anubis. Our curiosity is only just getting started. Theories like these challenge the status quo and keep us asking questions. After all, isn't it a bit weird? The awe-inspiring Great Pyramids of Giza are not only remarkable because of their massive scale, but also due to their mathematical precision and alignment. You know, the kind of precision that is surprisingly difficult to achieve even today with all our modern technology and tools. This leads us to ask, how could an ancient civilization accomplish such a feat? Let's start with the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu. It's the largest of the three pyramids, originally standing at an astonishing 481 feet. Not to mention, it was the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years, until the completion of Lincoln Cathedral in England in the 14th century. But it's not just about the size. The base of the Great Pyramid is a near-perfect square, with each side measuring about 756 feet. The level of precision is such that the difference in lengths between the four sides is less than two inches. Moreover, each side of the pyramid is carefully aligned to one of the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, again with an astoundingly minimal error. This already seems remarkable, right? But hold on to your seats, because it's about to get a lot more intriguing. The Pyramid of Khufu, along with the other two pyramids of Giza, are positioned in a way that mirrors the alignment of the three stars in the belt of the constellation Orion. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Orion was associated with the god Osiris, the god of the afterlife. This cosmic correlation suggests a deep understanding of astronomy that goes beyond mere charts. The mathematical sophistication and astronomical alignment present in these pyramids point to a highly advanced civilization. But again, the question remains, how was this accomplished? Mainstream history tells us that this was all done by sheer human ingenuity and labor, using simple tools and methods. Others, however, speculate about intervention from a higher intelligence, perhaps even extraterrestrial. The theories are as vast and intriguing as the pyramids themselves. Isn't it all just amazing? Or maybe it's just a bit weird. But goes any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. If we were to time travel thousands of years back and show a smartphone to the ancient Egyptians, they would likely see it as a divine or magical artifact. With this perspective, some researchers suggest that the pyramids, and indeed much of the awe-inspiring accomplishments of ancient Egypt, may have been influenced or even directly facilitated by extraterrestrial entities, whom the ancients may have perceived as gods. There is a theory known as the ancient astronaut theory that proposes the interaction of extraterrestrial beings with ancient humans. Supporters of this theory suggest that much of the technology, knowledge, and spiritual understanding of our ancient civilizations was handed down from these celestial visitors. The idea has gained popularity due to authors like Eric Von Dinken and shows like Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. Let's take a closer look at this theory in the context of ancient Egypt. Proponents point out that the construction of the pyramids, especially given the remarkable mathematical precision and astronomical alignment, could not have been possible with the tools and knowledge known to exist during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu. Therefore, they argue, the pyramids might be the result of technology or knowledge provided by an advanced, 
non-human civilization. Further fueling this theory are the Egyptian texts and artwork that seem to depict what could be interpreted as advanced technology or celestial beings. One example is the hieroglyphs in the Temple of Sedouan in Abydos that bear an uncanny resemblance to modern aircrafts. Also, many ancient Egyptian deities were associated with celestial bodies and were believed to possess incredible powers. Could it be that these gods were extraterrestrials, perceived as divine due to their advanced technology and knowledge? Were they the ones who instructed or aided the Egyptians in constructing the pyramids? The Great Pyramid of Giza is not just a testament to the engineering prowess of the ancient Egyptians, it's also an architectural mystery that seems to embed a deep connection to the cosmos. Let's delve into the intriguing details of how the structures on the Giza Plateau reflect an intimate understanding of the heavens, an understanding that seems surprisingly advanced for a civilization from more than 4,000 years ago. It's well known that the layout of the three primary pyramids mirrors the positioning of the stars in Orion's belt. This correlation was brought to the forefront by Robert Bovel and Adrian Gilbert in their Orion Correlation Theory. The three stars of Orion's belt, Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka, align almost perfectly with the apexes of the three pyramids of Giza. Moreover, the orientation of the pyramids to the north is so precise that it deviates from true north by just 3 slash 6 of a degree. Could the builders have had an advanced astronomical knowledge, or perhaps assistance from a more advanced civilization? Going deeper, the Great Pyramid itself has elements of celestial alignment. Its narrow shafts, dubbed air shafts or spirit stones, seem to be aimed at specific stars. The southern shaft of the King's Chamber points to Orion, while the northern shaft points to the circumpolar stars. Similarly, in the Queen's Chamber, one shaft points to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, and another points to the Ursa Minor constellation. It's fascinating to think that these structures, built thousands of years ago, could act as star pointers, adding another layer of intrigue. The Sphinx also shows signs of astronomical alignments. The Sphinx faces due east, and some theorists propose that it was designed to observe the equinoxes and solstices. The theory of the Sphinx representing the constellation of Leo during the Age of Leo, approximately 10,500 BCE, as proposed by Robert Bovel and Graham Hancock, challenges mainstream chronology and makes us question our understanding of the Sphinx and its origins. While skeptics argue these alignments could be coincidental, it's hard to dismiss the accuracy and precision involved. Could it be a random occurrence or is it evidence of an ancient civilization that had deep astronomical knowledge? Or perhaps even a sign of extraterrestrial intervention? As we continue to explore and decipher the secrets of ancient Egypt, the questions just keep piling up. And as always, thanks for watching. As we delve into the past, we discover that our history is full of mysteries and questions that even today's technology struggles to answer. From water erosion on the Sphinx to the possibility of Anubis taking its place, from the marvel of mathematical precision in pyramids to the curious celestial alignments, we're left pondering if human hands alone were capable of these feats or if there were other extraterrestrial forces at play. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, one thing is for sure, the more we explore, the more fascinating our world becomes. What if I told you that beneath the shimmering waves of the Indian Ocean, there lies a submerged city that just might be a legendary kingdom mentioned in an ancient epic? Yes, we're going on a deep dive into the story of Dwarka, a city described in the Mahabharata, one of the major Sanskrit epics of ancient India. This isn't just an exploration of myth and legend but also a journey through the fascinating realms of underwater archaeology and radiocarbon dating. So let's plunge into the depths and discover the captivating saga of Dwarka. Dwarka is more than just a name, it's a word that translates to the gateway to heaven. According to Hindu mythology, this majestic city was established by none other than Lord Krishna, a deity worshipped as the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu. Now, who is Krishna? You might ask, Krishna, a central figure in Hinduism, is widely revered for his wisdom, his strategic prowess, his supernatural feats and his role as a charioteer, 
advisor and friend to Prince Arjuna in the epic Mahabharata. In this ancient text, Krishna flees to the western coast of India after a catastrophic war. Here he establishes the city of Dwarka, a city so opulent and grand that it's often described as a city made of gold. But as stories go, this magnificent city meets a tragic end. After Krishna's death, a series of calamities strike. Submerged by the sea in a matter of days, the city disappears, taking all its architectural grandeur and wealth along with it. The tale of Dwarka is fascinating in its own right, but here's where it gets even more interesting. Myth aligns with a geological phenomenon known as sea level rise, which could result in the submergence of coastal settlements. So this begs the question, is Dwarka just a symbolic tale, or could it be an actual historical event dressed in myth and legend? The archaeology unit of the National Institute of Oceanography is making headlines. The team is embarking on an underwater archaeological expedition to see what lies beneath the sea at Dwarka. On the western coast of India, led by archaeologists S. R. Rao and S. Gao, the team discovers something that shakes up the world of archaeology. Structural remains and artifacts suggesting the existence of an ancient city. The expedition reveals well-planned stone structures, pottery shards, semi-precious stones and inscriptions, some of which date back to the Harappan civilization around 2000 BCE. The discoveries don't stop there. Subsequent underwater explorations reveal an extensive network of stone structures, extending over half a mile, which appears to have been built on the bank of an ancient river, the Gomati. The stone structures, ceramics and inscriptions lend credibility to the existence of a bustling urban center in antiquity. It's an intriguing find, right? But there's a twist. The artifacts and structures found underwater not only suggest the existence of an ancient city, but also hint at a city that may have been submerged by rising sea levels. Aligning strikingly with the legend of Dwarka, could it be that the legend of Dwarka was not merely a legend? but a page out of our own historical past preserved in mythology. So we have established that there's something under the sea at Dwarka. But what exactly did the explorers find? Well, the discoveries at Dwarka were nothing short of astonishing. Firstly, pottery shards were found in abundance. These pieces of ancient ceramics were from a variety of different eras, some of them dating back to the late Harappan period. The variety in pottery style suggests that Dwarka was inhabited over an extensive period of time, housing several generations of people. Then there were the semi-precious stones. These materials, often used for making jewelry, speak volumes about the economic prosperity of the city. The presence of such materials suggests that Dwarka was a trade center, exchanging goods with different parts of the ancient world. Next, there were the inscriptions. The most important of these was a seal that bore the image of a three-headed animal. The symbolism behind this creature remains a mystery, but the very fact that the inhabitants of Dwarka had a complex system of symbols suggests a sophisticated society. And then, of course, there were the architectural remains. Stone structures of various shapes and sizes were found, giving archaeologists a glimpse into the layout of the city. Among these structures, a series of circular fort-like constructions, believed to be part of the city's defense system, were particularly remarkable. Taken together, these discoveries form a remarkable narrative of an ancient city that was, in its time, a hub of civilization and commerce. And this narrative, much to our astonishment, aligns remarkably well with the mythical city of Dwarka described in the Mahabharata. In a world where we want hard facts, the science of radiocarbon dating can act as our time machine, providing an objective lens through which to view the past. And it was this scientific tool that was used to try and pinpoint the age of the submerged city of Dwarka. Radiocarbon dating works by estimating the age of organic materials, which include ancient artifacts and biological specimens. It's based on the principle that all living things contain carbon, some of which is radioactive C14, when a creature or plant dies, it stops absorbing this radioactive carbon. But the C14 it already contains continues to decay. By measuring the remaining quantity of C14, scientists can estimate how long ago the organism died, or in our case, when the artifacts were last used or made. 
Applying this technique, pieces of wood from Dwarka were sent to laboratories where they were analyzed for radiocarbon content. The results. The wood samples were found to date back to around 7,000. 500 years ago, vastly predating the expected timeline of Mahabharata, according to most historians. This significant revelation opened up a Pandora's box of questions. Could the submerged city really be the mythical Dwarka? If so, does it mean that our timeline of the Mahabharata is off? Or does it suggest that the city was inhabited long before Krishna supposedly ruled there? The epic merely borrowed the location's rich history. The radiocarbon dating results were a fascinating discovery, adding a new layer of complexity to the mystery of Dwarka. It reminds us that the lines between history, archaeology, and mythology can blur, leaving us to ponder on the intersection of fact and fiction. How does radiocarbon dating work? Let's step back from the Dwarka and elaborate a little more on this interesting way to measure age. All right, so imagine you're watching a video on YouTube. When the video starts, it's fully loaded, right? Now, let's say you pause the video and go grab a snack. When you come back, you notice that the video is unloaded a bit. It's been buffering, and you can't play it right away. That's a bit like how radiocarbon dating works. But instead of a video, we're talking about a kind of stuff called carbon minus 14. You see everything that was once alive, like a tree, a dinosaur, or a woolly mammoth, absorbed a type of carbon called carbon minus 14 when they were living. Once they die, they stop taking in new carbon minus 14. But here's the cool part. Carbon minus 14 is a little bit like a slowly buffering YouTube video. Over time, it changes or decays into another kind of stuff called nitrogen minus 14. Scientists call the time it takes for half of the carbon minus 14 to change into nitrogen minus 14. It's half-life. Kind of like if half your video had to buffer before you could watch it. For carbon minus 14, this half-life is about 5,730 years. Now, let's say we find a really old piece of wood, and we want to know when the tree it came from stopped living. We can't ask the tree obviously, but we can use a special tool to measure how much carbon minus 14 is still in the wood compared to how much carbon minus 12, a type of carbon that doesn't change over time, is in it. There's a lot of carbon minus 14 left. The tree probably hasn't been dead very long. But if there's only a little carbon minus 14 left, that means the tree has been dead for a very long time. And that's pretty much how radiocarbon dating works. Scientists use this method to tell how old things are that used to be alive from ancient wooden tools to prehistoric animal bones. It's like a time machine that helps us uncover the secrets of the past. The discussion surrounding the ancient city of Dwarka isn't without its skeptics. These are the people who question the conclusions that have been drawn from the archaeological evidence, and their doubts are an important part of the scientific process. One of the main areas of skepticism revolves around the age of the underwater city. Critics point out that while certain samples tested using radiocarbon dating suggest an older date, this doesn't necessarily confirm that the city itself is of the same age. Older organic material could have been incorporated into a younger settlement. Skeptics also point to the complexity and size of the structures that have been found underwater. They argue that these structures are far more sophisticated than what is typically associated with other sites from the same period. Some even suggest that the underwater ruins could be the remnants of a much more recent settlement, potentially even dating to medieval times. Then there's the question of the city's connection to the ancient epic, the Mahabharata. Skeptics argue that just because a city is found where the mythical Dwarka is said to have been, doesn't mean it's the same city. After all, there could have been multiple settlements in the area over the thousands of years of human history. Finally, Skeptics argue that more research needs to be done. The underwater site is extensive and only a small portion has been thoroughly investigated. Until more of the city is explored and more artifacts are found and tested, skeptics caution against drawing firm conclusions about the site's age and cultural significance. But where does that leave us? A submerged city? Radiocarbon dates that point to immense antiquity and a saga that may or may not be the echoes of a distant past. 
The quest for understanding Dwarka is a testament to the human spirit's insatiable curiosity, bridging the gap between myth and science. So the next time you gaze at the vast expanse of the ocean, remember that beneath its surface may lie stories waiting to be discovered. But as always, the journey towards knowledge is as fascinating as the destination itself. Ever heard of a civilization that planned their cities with intricate precision, used standardized weights, and wrote in a script that remains undeciphered to this day? Welcome to the mystical world of the Harappans, who flourished in the Indus Valley around 5,000 years ago. This ancient society, one of the cradles of human civilization, was so advanced for its time that it continues to baffle modern historians and archaeologists. Today we dive into the remarkable story of this civilization, exploring their urban architecture, mysterious script, sudden disappearance, and even, dare I say, possible extraterrestrial connections. Sprouting around 3300 BC, during what we now know as the Bronze Age, the Indus Valley Civilization, also known as the Harappan Civilization, was an oasis of advancement in an era when most of humanity was still dependent on hunting and gathering. Located in what is now modern-day Pakistan and Northwest India, it was a civilization that would change the course of human history. The remarkable thing about the Indus Valley Civilization is its expanse. It spanned from the majestic foothills of the Himalayas all the way down to the warm waters of the Arabian Sea, covering more than a million square kilometers. It was not a small collection of towns or cities, but a civilization composed of over a thousand individual settlements. Some of these settlements were as far away as Afghanistan, showcasing the reach and influence of this ancient society. The two largest cities, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, were the main hubs of the civilization. These cities have offered the most significant evidence about the culture, lifestyle, and technological prowess of the Harappans. The range of artifacts, from terracotta toys to a wealth of intricate seals found at these sites provides an insight into the complexity and diversity of this civilization. Moreover, the civilization was flourishing at a time when Egypt was still nurturing its first dynasties, and the Sumerians were laying the foundation of Mesopotamia. The Harappans not only coincided with these civilizations, but were engaging in long-distance trade, as indicated by Mesopotamian artifacts found in Harappan cities and vice versa. This ancient network of trade is a testament to the Harappans' enterprising spirit and their role in the early development of international commerce. The Indus Valley Civilization, with its vast expanse and technologically advanced cities, truly stands out in our human past as a beacon of the early urban revolution that laid the foundations for modern civilization. Few ancient civilizations can compete with the Harappans when it comes to urban planning and architecture. Their cities were laid out with remarkable precision, akin to a modern city's grid system. Main streets ran north to south, intersected at right angles by smaller east-west streets. The meticulous planning also extended to each residential block, where homes were arranged in a grid, facing the streets with entrances to the side for privacy. Now consider this. These cities were established around 2500 BC, a time when most of the world's civilizations were only just beginning to transition from nomadic to settled life. The Harappans not only mastered urban planning, but they also managed to implement it on a large scale throughout their civilization, a testament to their exceptional organizational skills. The architecture of the Harappan civilization was equally astounding. They built their houses, typically one or two stories, from uniform oven-baked bricks, a significant advancement from the sun-dried bricks used by contemporaneous civilizations. These houses were equipped with advanced features for the time, such as indoor bathrooms and sophisticated drainage systems, the presence of wells and bathrooms in almost every house, and the intricate network of covered drains indicate a deep understanding of hygiene and public health. In the midst of these residential blocks were larger public buildings and granaries, showcasing the communal aspect of the Harappan life. The Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro is a prominent example. This large watertight swimming pool-like structure hints at ritualistic or communal activities, possibly even an early form of public sanitation. The Harappans' urban planning and architecture represent a culmination of societal cooperation, engineering prowess, and a deep understanding of urban living's needs. 
It was this extraordinary blend of science and society that set the stage for the world's first urban civilization. The Harappans left behind numerous inscriptions, etched primarily on seals, amulets, and pottery. These artifacts contain symbols forming a yet undeciphered script. Despite concerted efforts by linguists and historians, the Harappan script remains one of the last untranslated scripts of the ancient world, containing about 400 distinct characters. Many scholars believe this writing system is logosyllabic, a blend of phonetic and symbolic elements, like ancient Sumerian or Chinese scripts. The inability to crack the Harappan script isn't due to lack of trying, but rather to a shortage of bilingual inscriptions, a tool that was pivotal in decoding ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. The absence of a Harappan Rosetta Stone has thus far kept the civilization's literature, if any, and many aspects of their culture tantalizingly out of reach. However, the Harappans did leave behind a system that we understand, their weights and measures. They used a binary decimal system for weights with ratios of 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, and 500. They used cubical weight measures made of chert, limestone, stertite, and a few of black basalt and red jasper, ranging from 0.856 grams to 8, 735 grams, evidencing a remarkable consistency and uniformity across a vast region. Measurements of lengths and masses reveal an amazing accuracy. They were capable of measuring angles, constructing geometric shapes, and aligning their architectural structures with cardinal directions. The meticulous precision of their measurements and the widespread use of standardized weights suggest a regulated economic and administrative system. While the Harappan script remains a puzzle, their weight system provides a fascinating insight into their society's structure and values. It underlines a highly developed sense of order, fairness, and possibly an early form of taxation once again underscoring the Harappan civilization's remarkable complexity and sophistication. As with many great civilizations, the decline and disappearance of the Indus Valley civilization presents a mystery that has baffled scholars for centuries. Around 1900s BCE, signs of gradual decline begin to emerge. The once meticulously planned cities show signs of dilapidation and less rigorous urban planning, standardized weights and measures, the hallmarks of Harappan society were used less frequently, suggesting a breakdown in the system of centralized control. Several theories have been proposed for this decline, ranging from climatic changes to societal upheavals. Some scholars believe a major shift in monsoon patterns could have led to prolonged droughts, making agriculture the backbone of the Harappan economy untenable. Geological evidence suggests that devastating earthquakes and floods may have played a significant role too, as tectonic movements altered river courses, particularly that of the River Saraswati, which vanished around the same time. Other theories propose the invasion of foreign entities, such as the Aryan people, as the root cause of the Harappan downfall. However, this theory has become less popular in recent years due to a lack of solid archaeological evidence supporting the existence of a large-scale conflict or mass migration. The gradual disappearance of the Harappan culture does not mean that it was completely erased. Elements of their practices and customs are believed to have been integrated into the cultures that succeeded them, particularly in areas such as craft-making and agrarian practices. In a way, the legacy of the Harappan civilization lived on melding with the fabric of the subsequent cultures of the Indian subcontinent. Despite the mysteries that shroud the decline and disappearance of this ancient civilization, the Indus Valley civilization's footprint in history is undeniable. They showcased remarkable progress in urban planning, technology, and societal organization, setting a strong foundation that undoubtedly influenced the civilizations that followed them. Their legacy is a testament to human innovation and resilience, providing a fascinating glimpse into our shared past. The allure of the unknown often entices us to search for links between disparate civilizations and sometimes even to conjecture connections with extraterrestrial entities. The Indus Valley civilization, shrouded in mystery due to its undeciphered script and abrupt disappearance, provides ample ground for such speculations. 
One intriguing line of inquiry emerges from the numerous Indus Valley seals that depict what appear to be flying objects. These objects have been subject to various interpretations, with some suggesting a link to the ancient alien theory. Proponents argue that these depictions may indicate that the Harappans had contact with extraterrestrial beings. However, mainstream academia generally dismisses these theories due to a lack of concrete evidence and the likelihood of alternative, more plausible interpretations. In terms of inter-civilizational connections, there's intriguing evidence of contact between the Harappans and contemporary Mesopotamian civilizations. Archaeological findings have unearthed Harappan seals and jewelry in ancient Mesopotamian sites, indicating trade relations. Additionally, references to a distant country known as Melaha in Mesopotamian texts are believed by many scholars to refer to the Indus Valley civilization. Some researchers also suggest possible cultural and technological influences between the Harappans and the ancient Egyptians, another civilization renowned for its advanced engineering feats. However, while such connections are plausible, given the maritime capabilities of these societies, concrete evidence supporting this theory remains limited. Unraveling these potential connections is a captivating yet complex pursuit. While these theories, particularly those involving ancient aliens, often venture into the realm of speculation, they underscore our fascination with the vast and complex web of ancient civilizations. As our understanding of the past continues to evolve, who knows what startling connections and revelations await us. As we take a step back and contemplate the Indus Valley civilization, it's not just their tangible achievements that mesmerize us, it's the aura of mystery surrounding their undeciphered script, the mystery of their abrupt disappearance, and the tantalizing possibility of connections with other ancient societies and perhaps even extraterrestrial entities. But the true testament to their legacy is how they inspire us to constantly question, explore, and strive to understand our shared human past. So next time you look at an urban grid or a piece of writing, Take a moment to appreciate the journey of human civilization. Picture yourself in the sands of ancient Egypt, standing in the shadows of awe-inspiring structures that challenge the very limits of human ingenuity. Pyramids, colossal tombs built by hands millennia ago, each one an embodiment of extraordinary architectural genius, unique in its own way. The sheer magnitude of these structures, coupled with their mystifying precision, hints at an expertise far beyond what we'd expect from the ancient world. But what if there's more to these structures? What if we've been looking at them all wrong? What if they're not just architectural feats, but rather signposts left behind by extraterrestrial visitors? Intriguing, isn't it? The Black Pyramid, located in the royal necropolis of Dashur, built by Pharaoh Amenemhat III, it's named for the dark-weathered casing stones that once covered it giving it a brooding, mysterious look. Despite its dilapidated state, the Black Pyramid still emanates an undeniable aura of ancient grandeur. The Black Pyramid was the first to be built with mud brick core and encased in a beautiful layer of black basalt, a departure from the usual limestone and granite, adding another layer of intrigue to this historical puzzle. Today, what remains is a glimpse of the grandeur it once held the blackened edifice standing like a solemn testament to the ingenuity of its creators. Why did Amenemhat choose to use this combination of building materials? Could it have been influenced by a need for a sturdier design, given the structural failures of previous pyramids? Or did the black stones have a specific symbolic or practical purpose beyond our current understanding? The use of different materials has led some to speculate about possible alien influence. The specific choice of black basalt, a volcanic rock known for its high density and resistance to erosion, sparks curiosity. Could it be that an advanced extraterrestrial civilization advised the use of this material to ensure the pyramid's longevity? We may never truly know. In the end, the Black Pyramid, much like its brethren, keeps its secrets well. And it's these qualities that continue to captivate and puzzle all who seek to understand the profound history of these ancient wonders. Inside the royal necropolis of Dacia, here we encounter a distinctive and peculiar monument known as the Bent Pyramid. But what gives this pyramid its unique bent appearance? Constructed during the reign of Pharaoh Sneferu, father of Khufu, 
The bent pyramid represents a transitional phase in pyramid construction techniques. Initially, it was designed with a steep 54-degree inclination, similar to the earlier step pyramids. However, about halfway up, the architect suddenly changed the angle to a much less steep 43 degrees, giving it a unique bent shape. Why the sudden change? Some theories suggest structural problems appeared during construction, leading the architects to adjust the angle to prevent a catastrophic collapse. But other theories are more mysterious. Some propose that astronomical or calendrical changes led to this alteration, or perhaps even extraterrestrial involvement or guidance. On the interior, the bent pyramid holds another surprise. Unlike most pyramids, it has two entrances, one on the northern face and another on the western, each leading to a different set of chambers. Was this intentional in design for ritualistic purposes? Or is there a more practical explanation? Much like its bigger brother in Giza, the Bent Pyramid is a marvel of ancient architecture that continues to perplex and astound us. It stands as a clear indication of the trial and error process the ancient Egyptians employed in their quest to perfect the pyramidal form. But the mystery of its bent shape still stirs the imagination. Could there be a lost alien blueprint or ancient technological knowledge that we are yet to uncover? Next on our journey through Egypt's awe-inspiring pyramids, we come to the Red Pyramid, another one of Pharaoh Sneferu's architectural wonders located in Dasher. Boy, red! Well, it gets its name from the reddish limestone used in its construction, especially visible at sunset. Often overlooked due to the grandeur of the Great Pyramid, the Red Pyramid is actually one of Egypt's true architectural marvels. After learning valuable lessons from the Ben Pyramid, Egyptian engineers built the Red Pyramid with a more manageable 43-degree slope from base to tip, giving it a more classical, pointed pyramid shape. Inside, it features a series of corridors and antechambers leading to a pair of burial chambers showing clear advancements in internal pyramid design from previous generations. The complexity of the internal design sparks questions about the mathematical and engineering capabilities of the ancient Egyptians. It's not unreasonable to think that they may have had some help, whether from an advanced ancient society or even extraterrestrial life. Perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of the Red Pyramid is the acoustic properties of its chambers. Visitors have reported experiencing a deep, pulsating resonance in certain areas. While scientists have attributed this to the structure's shape and materials, some theorists point towards a more otherworldly explanation, suggesting the pyramid was designed for an acoustic purpose beyond our current understanding. Stepping further back in time, let's visit Saqqara, home to the Pyramid of Djoser. This architectural masterpiece is not just another pyramid, actually recognized as the very first colossal stone building and the earliest colossal stone pyramid in Egypt. Constructed for Pharaoh Djoser by his architect Imhotep, it's a step pyramid, quite literally, a departure from the classic shape we're accustomed to. This six-tier, four-sided structure ascends in six distinct steps, much like a staircase to the heavens. But why would the Egyptians make a step pyramid instead of the smooth-sided ones we're familiar with? Some suggest this was a transitional design, an evolutionary step between the flat roof tombs of earlier pharaohs and the smooth-sided pyramids that followed. Others point to religious or cosmological reasons, seeing the steps as a grand staircase for Djoser's Kua, or life force, to ascend to the sky and join the gods. The pyramid's impressive subterranean network of tunnels and chambers, over five kilometers long, adds to the entry. Its complexity far outstrips anything attempted before. Was this vast, maze-like understructure a deterrent to grave robbers, a pathway for Djoser's Koa, or something more mysterious? Some proponents of the ancient astronaut theory suggest that these labyrinthine corridors are too complex to be solely the work of human hands, suggesting extraterrestrial involvement in their design. Our second last stop on this grand tour is the Pyramid of Maidum. A structure standing in the Egyptian desert with a story that's as fascinating as its unusual appearance. Unlike other pyramids we've looked at, the Pyramid of Maidum is characterized by its strange, tower-like structure, 
looking less like a pyramid and more like a colossal, multi-layered wedding cake. The Maiden Pyramid is believed to have been initially built as a step pyramid for the pharaoh Snefiru. What's interesting is that it appears to have been architecturally modified mid-construction, with the steps filled in to create a true pyramid form. But something went wrong. Dramatically wrong. The outer layers of the pyramid have collapsed, leaving just the inner core standing. What caused this? Did the architects overestimate the stability of their design, or was there an external factor at play? These questions linger in the wind that sweeps across the Maiden Pyramid, and researchers are still seeking answers. An even more tantalizing question is whether extraterrestrial beings could have influenced the construction of this pyramid. Alien theorists point to the Maiden Pyramid's complex design, the sheer scale of the project, and the sudden shift in architectural plan as indicators of potential alien involvement. Could this pyramid's unique design be an ancient echo of advanced knowledge imparted by extraterrestrial visitors? Until we discover conclusive evidence, the Pyramid of Maidom will continue to both baffle and captivate those who ponder its origins. If we go on a historical journey back in time, around 4,500 years ago to be precise, we encounter one of the most magnificent constructions of the ancient world. The Great Pyramid of Giza, and it's not just great in name, it's massive. Originally standing at 481 feet, 146.6 meters, making it the tallest man-made structure for over 3,800 years. Isn't that something? Constructed during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, it's estimated that around 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing between 2.5 and 15 tons, were used in its construction the precision and accuracy with which this colossal monument was built are truly mind-boggling. Its sides are aligned almost perfectly with the cardinal points. And its base is horizontal and flat to within just 21 amir. More fascinatingly, the pyramid's design incorporates complex mathematical and astronomical knowledge, such as the concept of PI in the solar year. How an ancient civilization achieved this feat is still a topic of heated debate among archaeologists and historians. Did the Egyptians possess advanced technology lost to time? Or, as some propose, were they aided by extraterrestrial beings? The Great Pyramid isn't just an architectural marvel, but also an acoustic one. It appears to focus electromagnetic energy in its chambers and beneath its base, leading to wild speculations about its purpose. From a grand tomb to an ancient power plant or a cosmic beacon, the theories are as numerous as they are intriguing. Have you ever looked up at the stars and wondered how our ancestors interpreted these celestial bodies? What if I told you there was a civilization that not only gazed at the cosmos, but wrote sophisticated texts that connected life, nature, and the universe in one profound framework? This was the Vedic civilization a culture that emerged around the same time when the pyramids were being built in Egypt, but halfway across the world in the Indian subcontinent. Their fascinating contributions to astronomy, philosophy and mathematics are still evident in modern society, yet their beliefs and laws seem to intertwine with other ancient civilizations. Even hinting at advanced technologies and extraterrestrial connections. So let's embark on a journey into the past to a time when the Vedas were being composed and uncover the intriguing world of the Vedic civilization. The Vedic civilization is named after the Vedas, which are the oldest scriptures in Hindu literature. But these are not just religious texts. They are in many ways a window into the culture, science and philosophy of a society that thrived between 1500s and 500 B.C., a significant component of ancient Indian society. The Vedic civilization spanned across the northern and northwestern parts of India, covering the modern-day states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and parts of Rajasthan. The Vedic civilization's chronology itself is intriguing. Its beginning coincides with the end of the Indus Valley civilization, leading some to suggest that the Vedic people might have been the successors of the Indus Valley people. Others suggest that they were entirely distinct entities with the Vedic civilization being pastoral and nomadic compared to the urban, settled life of the Indus Valley civilization. However, it's clear that both civilizations were remarkably advanced for their time. The civilization gets its name from the four Vedas, Rigveda, 
Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atharvaveda. These texts are a collection of hymns, rituals and chants used in religious rites and ceremonies. The texts are written in Sanskrit, and they provide valuable insights into the societal structure, economic practices, and philosophical beliefs of the Vedic people. But they also contain some intriguing elements that have sparked debates among scholars and enthusiasts alike. References to advanced astronomical knowledge, mentions of flying machines or vimanas and sophisticated metallurgical practices raise questions about how much the Vedic civilization knew and understood. Some argue that these elements point towards ancient technology, possibly even interaction with extraterrestrial intelligence, while others interpret them as metaphors or religious symbolism. The debate continues, making the Vedic civilization an endless source of intrigue and fascination. The Vedic civilization has left an indelible mark on the world, and its influence continues to shape our modern lives in ways that we may not even recognize. We owe a great deal of our understanding of early philosophy, astronomy, mathematics, and health sciences to this ancient civilization. Take, for instance, the concept of zero. Today, we take it for granted, but it was during the Vedic period that mathematicians began grappling with this revolutionary concept, changing the course of mathematics forever. Vedic astronomy was equally advanced. The texts detail a deep understanding of celestial mechanics. The Vedas describe how the Earth revolves around the Sun, a fact that was only widely accepted much later in human history. They also mention Vimanas, which many interpret as references to flying machines, causing speculations about possible advanced technology or even ancient aviation. The health sciences also saw significant advancements during the Vedic period. The Rig Veda and Atharva Veda mention numerous plants and herbs used for medicinal purposes, marking the early beginnings of Ayurveda, one of the world's oldest holistic healing systems. Yoga, a practice that is now globally recognized for promoting physical and mental well-being, also finds its roots in the Vedic civilization. In terms of societal contributions, the Vedic civilization also pioneered the caste system, an intricate social structure that has shaped Indian society for centuries. While controversial in its implications, it provides unique insights into the cultural and social organization of the time. Of course, the spiritual philosophy of the Vedas has had a profound influence forming the foundation for Hinduism and inspiring later philosophies like Buddhism and Jainism. The teachings emphasize the pursuit of knowledge, the harmony of the individual and the cosmos, and the principles of Dharma, righteousness, artha, wealth, karma, desire, and moksha, liberation, desire. Some elements of the Vedas have sparked lively debates. References to advanced technologies and knowledge that seems beyond the scope of a civilization from that era have led some to theorize about extraterrestrial involvement or connections with other ancient civilizations. When we start to dig into the intricacies of the Vedic civilization, we uncover striking resemblances to other ancient cultures, suggesting possible connections or shared influences. One of the most intriguing of these is the connection to ancient Egypt. Both civilizations flourished around the same time and shared surprisingly similar practices. For instance, the concept of Mart in Egyptian civilization closely mirrors the Vedic principle of Atai, both denoting cosmic order and moral law. Furthermore, both civilizations demonstrated advanced knowledge of astronomy. For instance, the Egyptian pyramids and Vedic structures both show a high level of astronomical alignment. Was this merely a coincidence? Or was there a shared underlying knowledge that spanned these civilizations? The connection to ancient Sumer is also noteworthy. The Rig Veda, one of the oldest texts of the Vedic civilization, mentions River Saraswati, which is believed to be the present-day Gagahakra River. Interestingly, Sumerian texts also refer to a river similar to the Saraswati, indicating possible interactions between these civilizations. Another fascinating connection is seen in the similarities between the ancient Harappan symbols and the later Brahmi script used in the Vedic civilization. Could it be that knowledge was passed from one to the other? Perhaps one of the most intriguing theories, however, involves extraterrestrial influences, 
Some theories suggest that the knowledge and advancements of the Vedic civilization were influenced by alien civilizations, citing references to Vimanas or flying machines in the ancient texts as evidence. While these connections are intriguing, it's important to approach them with a critical eye. The Vedic civilization, much like a supernova, may have had a relatively short lifespan compared to the cosmic scale of human history, but its impact continues to resonate even today. From the creation of Sanskrit, considered one of the oldest languages in the world, and the mother of all Indo-European languages, to the foundational texts of Hindu philosophy, the Vedas, the civilization has left behind a cultural and intellectual legacy that is profound and enduring. Beyond language and religion, the Vedic civilization's contributions to science, particularly mathematics and astronomy, were remarkable. They conceptualized the idea of zero and developed a decimal system of counting, revolutionizing mathematical operations. In the realm of astronomy, they charted the movements of celestial bodies with striking accuracy, underlining a sophisticated understanding of the cosmos. These advancements are not only intriguing for their time, but continue to shape modern scientific thought and practices. The Vedic civilization's influence extended to social structures as well. The system of Venus, a social hierarchy that would later evolve into the caste system, can trace its origins back to this civilization. While this has been a controversial legacy, it underscores the deep-seated influence of the Vedic civilization on the societal fabric of the Indian subcontinent. There are also fascinating yet controversial theories about the Vedic civilization's connection to ancient technology and even extraterrestrial life. References to Vamanas or flying machines in ancient texts have sparked speculation about advanced, possibly alien technology. While these theories often skirt the realm of fringe science, they certainly add to the intrigue surrounding this civilization. As we delve deeper into the lore of the Vedic civilization, we find intriguing parallels and points of convergence with other ancient civilizations. One such connection arises with the Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations in the world that sprouted in the fertile crescent of Mesopotamia. Like the Vedic civilization, the Sumerians had a pantheon of gods and they too were advanced in astronomical observations. Sumerian texts also speak of flying gods and chariots, which mirror the Vedic tales of Vimanas. Is it a coincidence that two distinct civilizations, separated by geography, came up with similar tales, or does it point towards a shared interaction with advanced technology, possibly extraterrestrial? Adding to the mystery are the theories postulating a connection between ancient civilizations and extraterrestrial beings. Ancient alien theorists proposed that gods in both the Vedic and Sumerian pantheon were, in fact, advanced extraterrestrial beings who are mistaken as deities. They cite references to advanced technology, like the Vimanas in Vedic texts, and the detailed astronomical knowledge that far surpassed what would have been possible with the technology of the time. Furthermore, striking similarities in architectural designs, symbolism, and religious rituals found across ancient civilizations have led to speculations of a shared ancient culture or a mother civilization. Some theories even suggest that this civilization could be the mythical city of Atlantis, which spread its knowledge across the world before it was lost to time. We've journeyed through millennia, across continents, and even ventured into the cosmos as we've explored the mysteries of the Vedic civilization. We've seen their incredible contributions, pondered their connections to other ancient civilizations, and even dared to question the possibility of ancient alien interactions. Whether or not these theories are true, they give us a deeper appreciation for the breadth of human history and the fascinating tapestry of cultures that have shaped our world. So, the next time you gaze up at the night sky, Remember the Vedas, the Sumerians, and wonder, what could the ancients see that we've forgotten? And as always, thanks for watching.